All right, Math Aid students, we are continuing with lesson 12.1. We're looking at example two, which is the Pythagorean theorem in three dimensions. You can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve problems in three dimensions. So we're going to go through this example here, and then we're going to have one that we need to do. On so looking um, at a box here, we have a box that's used for shipping, and it uh, is shipped narrow copper tube measure six inches by six inches and by 20 inches. Okay. That's giving us our dimensions here. We've got six inches by six inches and then 20 inches. Okay, so our length is 20, our width is six, and our height is also six. What is the length of the longest tube that will fit in the box, given that the length of the tube must be a whole number of inches? So this is telling us right here that if we end up with a decimal, we need to round, right? So that means that it wants us to find the length R, which is our diagonal from one corner to the opposite corner. Okay, so we are looking for the length R here. Let me use a different color for that. So if we've got R, that's a part of this triangle here that cuts through the middle of that box. But we are given enough information to determine the length of R, which is a hypotenuse of this triangle, right? So first thing we need to do is find this distance here. And then we are also given this distance here, right? Because these two side lengths are the same. So this would be 6 inches, right? This is 20 inches. So we use the Pythagorean first to find the distance of S. And that's going to be from this triangle right here. Okay? So that's going to be, we're going to plug that in to Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And they just use the values they have here, weight, that, width, and length. And then S would be that diagonal across. Okay? So plugging in what we know, we have 6 squared for our width. Our length is 20, so they plug that in. And then we're solving for that S, that hypotenuse of that first triangle that we're looking at. And so 6 times 6 is 36. 20 times 20 is 400. And then we have S. We're going to add those together. We get 436. Now... Um, so that is the distance that we need to find the square root of, right? So we're going to go ahead and we could find the square root for that, or we could know that we're actually going to have to square that number here, right? Because we can use a squared plus b squared equals c squared here, and we already have that value. Um, if you want to find the square root, it's probably going to be... Let's see, I'll just that real quick. So... Square root 346, no, 436, 436. And it's a decimal. So we're just going to leave it as this one over here. It is approximately 20.88 if you want to find that square root. But we're going to go ahead and plug it back in here, right? So again, we're looking at our height here for our second triangle, which is 6. And we have this distance here. We already have it squared. So we plug that value back in right here. Right, that's where that comes from. So we have 6 squared, because that's our height, plus 436, which is S squared. And then we end up with 36 plus 436. We add that together and we get 472. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and try and find the square root of that number square root of 472, and we get approximately 21.7, okay? We rounded to the nearest 10. And uh, if we are asking what length, let's see, the length of the tube that must be in a whole number of inches, because that's what it's asking us up here, we would round that to 21 inches. And here's why. Even though 21.7 technically if you're rounding to the nearest whole number, would be 22. The longest length is 21.7 that can fit in that box. You can't fit a 22-inch um, copper tube in that box. It has to be smaller than that number. So it would be 21. And so that's tricky. That would be maybe a spot for possible error there is that 22, right? Because you're saying, oh, that rounds up to 22. Well, you actually can't fit some, anything bigger than this, so you have to round to the nearest realistic whole number in this scenario, which would be 21 inches. So let's go ahead and do, oh, let's see what this math doc is asking us about here. 
Looking at step two, why did the calculations in step one stop before taking the square roots of both sides to the final equation? Okay, so that's what we talked about right here. We didn't find the square root because we knew that s squared was going to end up back in this equation anyways. So we would have had to find a square root, plug it back in, and then square it again. So we just kind of saved ourselves a step. Um, so we can just stop at that expression for s squared because it can be substituted right in there. It's a, little, a few little less steps. All right, now we're going on to the or term. So this is another three-dimensional question. So there's going to be a couple triangles that we're looking at in here. And we are given most, we are given enough information to solve. So Tina ordered a replacement test, a replacement part for her desk. It was shipped in a box that measured four inches by four inches by 14 inches. What is the greatest length in whole inches that could be that the part could have in? So again, that's going to be that diagonal across that box. We have 14 inches and four inches and four inches. So first thing we need to do is, again, is determine this distance right here, the hypotenuse of this base triangle, okay? And we have these distances. This is, if this is four inches here, this will be four inches here. So we have our a squared and our b squared, and we're looking for that s squared, okay? So I've got a squared plus b squared, and I'm going to use s because that's the variable it's using here, so s squared, okay? So I'm plugging that in. I've got 4 squared plus 14 squared equals s squared. So 4 squared, 4 times 4 is 16, plus 14 times 14 is 196, and that equals s squared. And so then I'm going to add these together, and I get 212. And I'm going to stop right there with s squared. I'm not going to find the square root, because I'm going to have to plug that back into the equation. So in this equation, this next one, because I'm trying to find this measurement right here, I'm going to call this A again. I'm going to use S, because it's already given to us, to find R. So I've got A squared plus S squared equals R squared. And so I'm just using the variables they gave us, but this is the same thing as A squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? It's that Pythagorean theorem right there. So my A squared here is that 4 inches, right? That 4 squared plus S squared, which I already know from this first equation which is 212. So common error would be to try and square this again. It's already been done. So this is what it needs to be. Don't do anything else to it. Equals R squared, okay? So this is 16, because 4 times 4 is 16, plus 212 equals R squared. So I add these up together, and I get 228 equals R squared. Now I need to find the square root of 228 to get r. And that's going to give me, if I calculate that out, let's go ahead and see what that looks like here. I know it's going to be a decimal. So that's going to be 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.28 square root, 15.099. Six six nine, and it might go on farther, but this is where the calculator stops. So we're going to round to our nearest tenth for now, and so we're going to say approximately fifteen point one equals r, but we need our greatest length in whole inches. So it can't be any greater than this. So in this case, the greatest length that this can be in whole inches is fifteen inches, right? Because we can't. Well, this does round down to 15, um, but we can't make it anything bigger than that, right? So it wouldn't be 16. 16 would be too big for the box. So 15, 15 inches for that one. Okay, so that was the second example there using Pythagorean theorem in three dimensions. Hopefully that will be a little helpful for you. You do have a question like that um, in your, in the guided, maybe not the guided practice, but in the, uh, Oh, in the guided practice, as well as in the independent practice, and possibly on a quiz. So keep that in mind. Make sure you understand how to do this, or at least you understand your notes and can read them as a reference. So uh, there'll be one more video posted of the guided practice. Um, 
But if you have questions, make sure you're writing them down and you're asking them in class so we can talk about them and work through any questions that you might have. All right, that's it. I will see you on the flip side.